Hello and welcome to Jessie James Beads. I'm Jem, I'm coming to you from England, the middle of it basically, somewhere between Birmingham and Northampton. No, that's a lie. It's Birmingham and Oxford. Completely lost the plot and don't know where I live anymore. That's always a good start, isn't it? For today's lovely, lovely get together, we're going to be working with Gollum beads. Now, if you're unaware of Gollum beads, then you're in for a treat having a look and finding out about a few more of these. They're absolutely gorgeous. The detail is stunning. I'm going to pop you down to the board to have a quick look at the project we're going to work on today. I have popped links in the video description today which tell you a little bit about where you can get to the strand we're going to work with today which is dandelion and some other golem beads as well. So let's have a look down here. So this is the design that we're going to be making. Let me just get a darker background for that for a second. So it's a nice pendant design in so much as it's got dangly bits on and I really like to have movement in jewellery. It's gorgeous to be able to have those move around but what I hope that you will take away from today's live get together is that these little techniques are all completely accessible to be used individually as charms or earrings and the such. So let's have a quick look at the Gollum strand that is known as Dandelion. And what you have on your dandelion strand is two of these gorgeous light coloured beads with a dark overlay and the overlay is embedded into the surface. They feel amazing, really, really gorgeous beads. You also get a couple of these large faceted, almost a smoky grey. Whoops, there it goes. You get a couple of those you get the usual accompaniment of spacers. These are gorgeous. You get those in two sizes. You've also got a beautiful open filigree bead cap as well. A little milky opal type glass crystal. You've also got the dark one and then these really, really cool, interestingly faceted ones. Now this is half coated, which I adore in beads at the best of time. I'm showing you the supporting cast before I bring you the main event, as it were. So this one is kind of gold on one side and grey on the other side where it's not had the same coating. So the body of the bead is grey and it has these moments of high polish and these moments of a semi-matte buff, which is gorgeous absolutely love these little things they're so so pretty so you get a couple of those and you also get one of these which is the dandelion in question so I'm going to recreate the main section of this design that I've done here in the round shaped golem bead with the oval to show that you can use either of those. I'm also going to be working in a copper wire today simply because it shows up a little bit better on that background and on camera. MC is in, hello Jem, hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much, you also. Karen is in, hello, I love those faceted beads. They're really cool, aren't they? Carolyn is in, hello, hi to you and hi to all. Um, Carolyn says, hi Jem, thank you my love, hi to you too. So apparently we have comments working, which is happy days. So as I say, I'm going to work today with the oval but I'm also going to show you what it looks like in the copper wire with the round large golem bead from this strand. So if I just pop the, the piece I've already made down along with the pieces we're going to work with today, let me just yoink those out of the pot for a hot second. This is what you get on your golem bead strand. You've got the, the lovely extra metals and they're really details, they're almost like fancy doilies. If you don't know what a doily is, it's um, I don't know if that's an English thing or if that's something that's all around the world. Certainly a couple of generations above where I'm at, doilies were very popular on tables. Pretty little kind of lace circles to, I guess, stop the plant pots and the teapot from marking the furniture? I don't really know. I haven't ever really looked into the history of doilies, but that's what these little spaces remind me of. I'm wandering again. I'm so sorry. Let's bring you back up here for a hot moment. I have been known to wander off 
off of the topic ever so slightly if you don't have experience with golem beads do give them a try i've popped a link on the video description not only to the golem strand but also to all the other golem strands and the individual ones they are some absolutely stunning miniature works of art as far as i'm aware they're hand put together which is is fabulous knowing that that artistry has traveled to come to you and be glorious and be made into your beautiful jewelry so let's have a look and see who else is joining us today. Sherry's in from Florida. Lucky. Nyaka's in from Illinois. Hello to you, my darling. Celia is in. Afternoon. Had a delivery today from Jesse James Beads UK. Orange bell pepper mini becks and the dragonfly. Nevertheless, she persisted. If you love dragonfly, nevertheless, I had a day with dragonfly, nevertheless, which is on my YouTube channel. If you fancy it. I adore that mix, Celia. I hope all is well in Lancashire with you today. Robin is in from, I want to say, California, but I'm not necessarily au fait with what the uh, the little two-letter thingies mean. So if I incorrectly identify where you're from, I'm very sorry. I don't know. I'm not very good at those sorts of things. Anyway, let's pop you back down to the board so you can see what we're talking about today rather than my silly face. So we're going to work with the oval dandelion focal bead today. You can equally work with any of the rounds, any of those beautiful, beautiful large circular forms as well. And we've got supporting cast here. So by the time I finish today, I will have made three pendants from the one strand. So I think that's really cracking value. So let's get some of these bits out of the way. I do love movement in jewellery. It gives you something to, uh, you know, mess around with if you're having one of those days where you want to just feel secure about things i really enjoy jewelry with movement anyway if you don't like it then perhaps this one isn't for you maybe you'd like to create just the focal section horses for courses as we say here i hope you're all having a beautiful beautiful day celia at the end of tonight as uh, uh, the end of this morning's i suppose dependent on where you are at the end of today's live i'll pop a link in remind me if i don't yes it's california no sound for clara hi from Anne, also in california is everybody else getting sound okay that may be a local problem for you clara i do hope that that resolves you can put the closed captions on Unfortunately, I have no control over where the closed captions generate on your screen, though. So let's have a look at the materials we're going to work with. As I mentioned in the video introduction, I've created the piece that we're looking at right now using a medium temper German style wire. You can create this project using pretty much any te uh, temper of wire that you like, if it's fully hard or if it's a medium temper like this one is, or if it's soft like the copper I'm going to demonstrate with. If it's softer, you may need to just strengthen the pieces. That's absolutely fine, uh, but it will all come out good in the end. It doesn't really matter, but we are using 18 gauge. Now, 18 gauge in the UK is equivalent to one millimeter. So I know we're a funny breed. We interchange our metric and imperial at the drop of a hat. But uh, yes, that's the way it is. <laughs> so that's the piece we're going to make today. I'm going to pop that up in the top corner for now. And next to it, I'm going to pop what it would look like in copper next to it. And you'll see why I choose to demonstrate in the copper wire instead. Let's have a quick look. Carolyn is in from Tennessee. Fabulous. I hope you're having a beautiful, beautiful day. Everyone who has joined us today, I hope you're having an absolutely stunning time. So I have around about 12 or 13 inches of that 18 gauge wire. I'm working with a reasonably soft wire, a mid soft, but you will be able to achieve the same design with pretty much any type of wire that you like. So I'm just going to smooth some heat into the central section because that's where we're going to start working at the beginning. Well, that is where we're going to start, which I know is weird. And again, this is around about 12 or 13 inches of wire. If I find that midpoint, I'm going to grab now my pliers. These are my favourite bent chain nose pliers. The key here is that they have flat surfaces and it's helpful if they're reasonably tapered you could use as an alternative standard tapered chain nose pliers like these as long as those two surfaces are flat it means you'll be able to get a good bend when you need a good bend and that's what we're looking for with pliers in jewelry 
So I hope, as I say, that you're all having a wonderful day. Central section of wire has been warmed through. And again, that's 18 gauge. So I'm just going to firmly grip that central section and turn a nice right angle. And we're going to start in the middle with a wrapped loop. And I know that sounds absolutely nutty, but that's what we're going to do. I'll just pop my pliers out of the way for a second. And let's rotate those pliers around. So you can see I tend to start with a shepherd's crook shape. And then I pop the pliers back into position and draw the wire over. If you are more confident with your wire working, you will more than likely be able to do that in a single manoeuvre. I tend to demonstrate with the two-part manoeuvre because it's much easier for people who are just getting to grips with wire. So I'm just putting a little bit of warmth through that central section. And at the same time, I'm going to harden the loop up at the top. Now, in theory, if you were struggling a little bit with dexterity or strength, you might be able to make this design in a 20 gauge, which is equivalent in the UK to a 0.8 millimeter. Um, what you will need to focus on is that when you have these little loops that are functional, you'll need to add some extra strengthening to them. You will find turning coils, as we're about to do, just a little bit easier though. So again, it's entirely up to you I'm using the 18 gauge or one millimeter now what I'm doing here is opening and closing those pliers over that loop not where the wires cross just over the loop to give that a really good sense of strength so we've got a tail coming off to the side which we're going to rotate around that central core and I'm going to try and build a nice set of coils if your coils start to open up at the top what you can do is just rescue that before you go any further tighten that up and then continue coiling. If it does become a bit of a struggle for you in the heavier wire, then perhaps use that slightly light, lighter wire. Now what I've done here is there's a loop which is slightly wider than it ought to be. Now that's something that, that does happen quite a lot, especially when you're newer to wire working. So go slowly, don't rush the process. So I'm just going to address that by squishing the coil so that those two wires sit neatly side by side. Hopefully you can see how that's building up and I'm going to flip that over and again I'm just going to tighten those coils up to the top where that loop is formed and then I'm going to put a little extra warmth through the tail that's wrapping around. Now when I'm working here on the board what I have to do is bend the wire slightly more than we need to because it means I can take it around. You will be able to move the uh, the product or the wire much closer up and away from the board but that's all really really blurry and uncomfortable for you to look at so you won't have the same issues i do hope that that's all coming through okay for you now is sound okay for you now clara have you found a fix for your issues so what we're going to do is make sure that we bring the tail of wire over the front like so. So if you imagine that we're going to hang this on a necklace later or on a piece of chain or on a thread of some description, whatever you want to use, you're going to be hanging it in this orientation. So we want the wire to come away to the side as it were. What I need to do now is put a little bit more heat in this side wire because it's seen some action rotating around that core and what that does is it hardens the wire. So we just want that to be nice and smooth ready to be used in a second. So I'm going to bring that around a couple of times and just allow that to sit out of the way for a moment. So here what we're going to do now is add in the bead of choice and I'm using the main focal dandelion bead from the strand Maria is in hello my lovely happy day to you there we are hopefully things are going your way today so that my classic thing that I do when I'm making jewelry is I will pop the bead on and I won't notice until I've completely finished the design that my focal bead is theoretically upside down now sometimes I'll claim that that was a design idea and I did it on purpose but generally it's just me not really looking at things properly so I've actually just re-threaded that upside down again which is madness so we'll put that on the correct way up this time what I'm going to do now is to put some smoothness and warmth in the wire that's protruding from the bottom of our gorgeous dandelion golem bead what we're going to do then is put another right, not quite a right angle, almost a right angle down at the bottom. Now I'm using my pliers to put a bit of space between the bead and where the angle that we're turning that tail of wire down at the bottom away to one side. So it needs to be a reasonable amount of wire because we're going to be wrapping around that with one of these tails and then with the other tail of wire. So we need a bit of space. 
So if I turn the angle out to one side and then show you what kind of gap there is, let's just use one of these beads. We're not putting a bead like this here, but you can see the kind of distance. If I bring up the milky opal one, it's about the breadth of the milky opal bead that I'm allowing before that angle comes out to one side. What we're going to do next is in essence, a design I've taught for about seven years now, which is the baby dragon tail ending. Now I made these into earrings years ago and I adore how they look. So the baby dragon tail is just this little trilogy of swooshes as it were. So that's what we're going to do next, a trilogy of swooshes, which is based on the baby dragon tail technique. So for this, I'm going to use my round nose pliers. You could use bail making pliers if you prefer. It's absolutely up to you, whichever is going to make you happier. So let's have a look. Um, Maria is in and Teresa is in from Tampa, California again for the other Maria. Sorry about that. Happy, happy day to you all. So we've got a little angle, which is a milky opal coloured faceted rondelles distance from the bottom of that dandelion focal. And what we're going to do now is make our first circular form. So where the angle starts and protrudes out to the right, it's probably around about 45 degrees, maybe slightly, slightly more than that. What we're going to do is to turn a loop that crosses back over our first little angle. So popping those pliers in underneath further away than I want them to appear and then I'm going to rotate those pliers around and then draw the tail of wire across and what we're looking for is to have a nice loop shape down at the base crossing back over where we made that first angle. So if I move it around the light will dance over the wire and you should be able to see how that looks. Now before we go any further what I'm going to do is give those a hearty squish. I like the shape we've made here, I want to keep that shape. You could make it much more round or you could keep it this almost pear drop shape that I have created today, totally within your control. Now for the overall design today what I've done is created openable loops on my charms. Because they're not carrying a huge amount of weight and because I'm working in 18 gauge or one millimeter wire, what that means is these aren't going to have an overly huge risk of being snagged and pulled away because it's a good strong wire. If you feel that this is not for you and you want to have wrapped loops up at the top of your charms as some people will prefer to do, what you will need to do is make the charm section first so I'm not going to do that because I'm happy with the openable loops, but you'd create the charm section. I'm going to show you all of those later on after we've finished our main focal section. And then once you've got your wrapped loop, you'll need to slide that on every time you create a loop before you move to the next circle. So if you're going for wrapped loops on the charms, pop that on now, and then we'll move on to the next loopy swoopy shape. Loopy swoopy doesn't sound terribly uh, posh or terribly, um, I don't know, professional, but it's, it's how I like it. So I'm going to start again a little further away than I think I need to. And I'm just going to draw the wire around and then allow that to swoosh across again, that initial angle change point down at the base. And now we're going to make an almost a bow tie style. So again, I'm just going to flip that around so that you can see the light dancing off those wires. At this point, you would need to add in your second charm if you're going to add them in with fully wrapped loops. As I mentioned, I'm going to use open and closable loops because I believe that it is perfectly adequate for this design. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of heat and warmth in the wire coming away on the side. And what I'm going to try and do is get a similarly sized swoopy loop as I did on the first section there, or the, the preceding section rather. So again, I'm popping the pliers slightly further away than they need to be and rotating the pliers around. Now, the benefit of using your bail makers is that you will always get the same size. So you could remember perhaps that you were using number three. So one, two, three and then you would always have the same sized swoopy loopy bit. I'm just going to eyeball it for today, uh, but you have that option or you can use marker pen on your pliers just to define the exact size. I'm actually not overly worried if they're slightly different sizes. Now to create a nice safe and secure design, the wire has come through the dandelion golem 
it swooped around once swooped around twice so what I'm going to do now because the wire has been traveling upwards is for this last cross over that angle that we created down here I'm going to take it underneath the rest of those swoopy loops and I'll show you what I mean if I just take the tail across and underneath we'll have a look at if that looks okay I'm quite happy with how that shape has formed you can make them slightly smaller and slightly larger what I'll do now is I'll just over enlarge this piece and we'll pretend I made it far too big so if I just bring that around it will mark the wire slightly but oh dear that side is far too big you can see it's all lopsided now so in order to fix that I'm going to very gently just open it out slightly press the wire between my thumb and forefinger get it nice and warm and then just open that out and go again but make it slightly smaller now the wire will be slightly marked because I mashed it by getting it wrong but you can just take a little bit more time and I like to show you how to fix things in case things do indeed go wrong so I'm just going to rotate that wire around and bring that wire back you can see I've made a bit of a lump out of it now but you can indeed get that to sit better it's too small now and again if it's too small you can rotate that back and just bring it until it sits exactly how you want to so there's usually a way that you can slightly rescue things if things go just a tiny bit out of your control so what we've done is we've come through the golem bead we've gone at an angle out to one side we've swooped around we've swooped around this way we've swooped around for our third swoopy loop and then I've taken the wire underneath now what this means is when we take the tail of wire that we've made the swoopy loops with we're going to wrap that one and a half times around the core it's going to tie everything together neatly and it stands a much better chance of surviving a long long time so as I mentioned before you would then add in if you're using wrapped loops on the charm sections these parts if you want them to have wrapped loops up at the top you will need to insert the third one so one two and three if I did that on air now what would happen is you'd see a jumble of things and it would be really tricky for you to focus on what is essentially the, the part of the technique that we need to learn together so that's why I've not popped any loops in but you would need to add your third one in now what I'm going to do instead is give really good squishes over those swoopy loops one at a time and only ever where one piece of wire is passing around never where they cross over and I'm just squishing those swoopy loops so that they are nice and strong and will last for years to come so to finish off down at the bottom with the swoopy loop section what I'm going to do is draw the wire that came underneath after that final swoopy loop and I'm just going to make that sit around the core wire between the dandelion and the first angle that we created so you don't need many wraps I'm just taking the tail over the top and fitting it so that it circles all the way around the core one time and you can finish that at the front you can finish it at the back at the moment there isn't a front and a back because two-sided golem bead to the rescue so what I'm going to do is straighten up the baby dragon's tail design down at the bottom and I'm going to pop in now with my flush cutters taking care that I'm cutting only the excess of wire away that is enough to make a charm with so we're going to keep that to one side and we've got a nice flush cut down on the central core section we just need to make sure that that sits down flat so if I turn this up can you see that shiny end of the wire just glinting in here that indicates to me that the end of the wire that we literally just trimmed a second ago is sticking up so what I'm going to do is very carefully draw my pliers over the surface of that section and just squash it until it sits flat and neat and then I do a bit of a thumb rub test there's no sticky uppy jagged bits so all is good at this stage I'm going to define that my side wire is going to come away on the right hand side I'm quite happy with how the wire is looking down at the bottom if you struggle with what that looks like flip it over and see if you prefer the other side so they will look slightly different on one side you'll see a little bit of a gap between those wires you could if you wanted to just tighten those up slightly but my preference would be to simply define that flip it this side is the front so that's what we're going to do this is the front of our design this is the neater of the two sides what I'm going to do is to create that swooshing arc around the side I'm going to show you the example using the round golem 
and then I'm also going to show you using silver wire have a look at those examples for a hot second while I check to see if there are any questions Cynthia says I finally made a live hi Gem how are you darling I am cracking thank you Cynthia absolutely fabulous to see you here thanks for hanging out with us Nyaka says thanks for the tips on how to correct you are very very welcome Buena Park in California says Maria that sounds absolutely delightful one day I shall make it to California one day I will come and harass you all to come out for a cup of coffee with me so what we're going to do is just first of all put some warmth into that side wire which is going to create a beautiful smooth swoosh so this is a very flowing design the baby dragon's tail design i originally came up with in now i can't remember if it was 2015 2016 somewhere like that and it was as a way to show the flow of wire it doesn't have to be hard everything doesn't have to be covered in weaving sometimes you can have quite simplistic shapes and forms and it's still quite effective and in this instance it's quite functional so what we're going to do is recreate the design that i've used on these round golem beads i'll just pop those back up to the corner and we're going to do the oval justice now again i cannot impress upon you enough adding warmth to your wire before you ask it to do smooth things is key so that's super toasty now and I have gone for thumb and forefinger maybe five times over that now and what I'm going to do is because this is a lovely stable bead and I'm not using anything sharp or jagged I'm going to use the bead itself to help me shape that swoosh so just bringing that all the way around it springs out because wire does spring so the key here is to make sure that your loop at the top which is your hanging loop you could make that larger if you wanted to use it on big chains or large ribbons and the such what we need to have is the loop facing this way and the wire at the side coming around at 90 degrees opposing to it hopefully that all makes sense and then going to draw the wire across the front of the design slightly now you can have the wire slightly coming over the front of the golem as I have done with this example I like how that looks and I've also added a loop on this one which I'll show you how to add it means that there's a little movement in that central golem but it doesn't move too much if you want to you can create much more um, movement in the piece by taking that swoop much wider let me just bring that into full focus for a second so this golem bead has a bit more space and will spin fully so it's horses for courses again you can absolutely define that whichever way you want pop those there for a hot second okay so I'm just going to make sure that the wire is going exactly where I want it to and I think we'll have this one just a little bit more spacious so that our golem bead with the dandelion on can spin what you may need to do is ensure that you've left yourself enough space down at the base underneath and I'm just going to pinch both the bead and the wire that swishes around the side now these are color safe so I'm really really happy with these they're absolutely beautiful I'm going to pinch both of those pieces and draw the tail all the way around the core where we wrapped that last tiny little bit of wire above the baby dragon tail the little three swooshes down at the bottom so i'm going to pinch those two together with my non-dominant hand and take the tail all the way around that core and bring it around just one time again i'm putting a little bit of warmth in that wire so you can see that we've got a nice swooshing arc all the way around the edge if you wanted to dive into your bead stash you can halo this side something that we've done in the past is just adding beads on the edges so you can absolutely go for that it's a project I'll be teaching at the to, oh, in a couple of weeks I can't remember when I bring you green member I'll show you how to halo around the outside of a, a section like this but uh, if you like it a little bit smoother and with lines that are sleek perhaps this is the way for you so if you wanted to you could take the tiny tail of wire around the back flip it over and trim off at the rear and again just squish down that last tiny section but I really like having a coil here now in the other copper variation using the round golem I brought the coil upwards over the surface of the bead which prevents it from spinning overly much it's got a little bit of movement in the 
first one that I made using the silver colour wire I brought the spiral down. Now I'm going to show you how to bring the spiral down because we've left loads of space around the dandelion golem here and it just means that you can spin that central bead if you wish to. Your alternative is to take the coil in the opposite direction and sit it up over the face of the bead. So again you've got some choices there. Now for a nice coil we need not quite this much wire so I'm just going to give that a really good smooth and then trim it to let's go with about just under an inch. So I'm going to put my scrap wire to one side because it will always be good for something and then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers next and I'm going to start coiling. To make my life slightly easier I'm going to make the coil at 90 degrees to the main design and I'll show you what I mean very very end of my pliers, very very end of that wire and I'm going to start rotating around making coils neatly, just go slowly. So I've started making the coil, currently it's sitting at 90 degrees to the whole rest of the piece. What I'm going to do now is switch that into the flat facing pliers and just continue rotating and rotating around until that sits where I want it to. So I'm just going to move that ever so slightly so I can see where I want it to go. And what I'm going to do now is sit that spiral down over the centre of the baby dragon tail. That's one of Joey's hair. Joey is one of my dogs. He's the one that's a bit of a unicorn. Happy International Unicorn Day, by the way, my JJB family. Um, I don't know if it's something that is big on your mind today, but today is Nas International Unicorn Day. So uh, yeah, happy Unicorn Day. Joey's a bit of a unicorn. He's, an, he's one of a kind, that's for sure. So I've made that coil and I'm going to sit it down now over the centre of the baby dragon's tail and just give that a very, very gentle squish into position. Now I'm constantly telling you not to press two wires together. So when I'm doing this manoeuvre, it's very, very cautious, very, very slow and controlled. And it's just to put that coil flat down over the surface of the design. Very, very gentle manoeuvre. So we have now our spinning golem bead section. If you need to, you might need to just open that up at the top. So what I would do here is just give that a gentle tease with the pliers. And you can see then that that moves a little bit more freely. Or tip the uh, loop at the top back. So there you have your spinning design. I think I've probably made this just a little bit too tight. So if I need to fix that, I'm going to draw the wire down at the base like so and see if I can now fully spin that around, which we can all bar a tiny snaggle at the top there. So if you wanted to spin that and you didn't give yourself enough room, you can absolutely make that move to your whim. So you've got choices in how to fix things if things go slightly awry. We just made a bit more room and now that does indeed spin around. It's been three quarters of the way around anyway. So what we're going to do now is have a go at making some of the charms using the beads we have left. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial, if you don't want to make the whole thing, if this is a bit too much for you, then you can make a focal bead with your gorgeous dandelion golem uh, bead strand collection. I want to call them a collection because they're beautiful. Or you can utilise the design ideas with the individual little loops down at the bottom. I'm just going to check in on the Book of Face to see how we're looking for questions. How do we get your kits? This one, Monica, isn't a kit. This is available on the Jesse James Beads website. The links to the Dandelion products are available. Uh, the Dandelion Gollum product is linked, as are all of the other Gollum bead strands. These are fun looking, says Cynthia. I'm appreciative. Thank you very much. I love your beads, Monica. Oh, so do I. They're gorgeous. Love your tutorials. They are so well done. I'm absolutely glowing with gratitude and appreciation, darlings. It's really, really kind of you. And I am very, very happy to be here with you. And I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me. I love my JJB family. So, yes, thanks for being here. Uh, there are links to the Gollum dandelion strand and there are links to all the other Gollum beads. Individual and bead strands are both listed if you hit that second link. So you have access to all of those. We're going to create together now a couple more bits and pieces. We've got the rest of the dandelion strand just here. So I've got a couple of smaller spacers, a couple of those doily type spacers and several beads and a bead cap. 
Now you may have noticed these weird spring looking things. I'm going to show you how to make one of those and if you just want to add a little bit more space on your uh, beads designs very very easy to do it's helpful if you have bail makers now it doesn't matter if they're the two step or the six step what we're going to do is work off the reel for a moment i have a big reel of copper wire here i'm just going to unspool probably about eight inches or so we won't need all of that what i'm going to do is say let's go for size number i reckon number three on my multi-step which is not too distant in size from the smaller on the two-step bail making pliers what i'm doing is i'm starting to coil around that number three pin so i'm keeping tension on the wire that comes back to the reel and I'm basically spiralling or making a gizmo coil or a coil or a spring. Coil it what you want. The cut end of the wire is moving up and away. If you go in the opposite direction, you will only ever be able to make sections of spring or coil that are as long as the post you have available. On the two step, that's quite a long distance, but on the six step, it's slightly less so. So if you take and rotate that cut end up and away, I'll show you what happens. We'll go quite extensive on this one. So all I'm doing is small, it's between a quarter and a half turn. You can of course use your gizmo coiling kit if you have one, but you'll see when you're working with the cut end going away from the box joint of your pliers, you can make as much of this as you need. So we're making so much more than there is available on the actual pin part of those pliers. So let's just make a little bit more. And then what we're going to do is cut away. I'm going to use the flush side to release that spring. Let's get my big old spool of wire out the way. That's quite a long spring. I don't want to use all of that. So what I'm going to do is separate this one into two pieces. I can just very, very gently tease that open. And because you put tension in when you're using this technique, it's very much like a spring. So I'm just going to split that in the middle, just open it up slightly until I can get access to one of these sections. So I'm going to want to use this side so I'm going to use the flush cut on this side, like so. And then very, very carefully, I'm just going to tease that back together so I have a useful functional spring. On the other side, you could try and get that sticky uppy bit to sit down neatly. My preference is to very, very carefully, making sure I'm not nicking the other piece of wire that continues down the spring. I'm just going to cut away that snaggly bit. And then we've got two short extending springs that are always helpful to add in to your designs. So for the next part of our demonstration today with the beautiful beautiful Gollum strand known as dandelion, I've got a piece of wire that we cut away earlier on. This is around about three and a half to four inches in length. Again it's 18 gauge. I'm just going to check if there are any questions. I do not see the link for beads. Uh, make sure your husband and children know how much we appreciate them lending you to us. Oh my gosh, Teresa, that's a beautiful thing to say. Uh, I've, oh, wow. Oh, I feel a little bit tearful now. Margaret says, hi, Jem. Sorry, late. Fell asleep. You just rest and heal, lady. Don't you worry. Cynthia, are the beads available? When I checked before today's live, I put the links in for both the dandelion strand in the words that sit above our live. Now I put a link for both the dandelion strand and the rest of the Gollum products that are available on the main Jesse James Beads site. So if you find one of those or go to jessejamesbeads.com and do a search, you can either search dandelion if you want this one or you can search Gollum if you'd like to peruse the other beautiful, gorgeous, artistic strands that you uh, have available. So you'll be able to see immediately what is available to you. There were available as I went to air. So let's head back over to our technique. So as I say, this is about three and a half to four inches. I'm using scrap wire, but you can cut an extra piece if you need to. I'm going to really grip hold of one end of that wire and put a lot of heat into this. I want it to do something quite cool in a minute. So we want it to be really nice and smooth and warm. And we're going to work at the end that's getting most of the heat, which is down here. So that's nice and smooth and toasty. What we're going to do now is to start making a small loop on one end just here. Now the end product is a little similar 
but the way we make it is totally different which is why I like to share this technique with you today because it just gives you options and choices. What we're going to do is come a little way in from the end of that wire and again it's 18 gauge round. I'm going about halfway up my round nose pliers and I'm going to start to create a loop shape. Now if that wire crosses over that's absolutely fine. It's much easier to cut a tiny tail of wire off the end than it is to make that absolutely perfect. So once we've created that first loop, I'm just going to sit the end of the wire back against. So it's come all the way around and the end of the wire is sitting against the remainder of the strand of wire. Once that is sat in position, I'm just going to give that a quick harden, but only around the loop section. So just open and close a couple of times. I'm going to pop underneath with my bent chain nose pliers and I'm going to draw the pliers a little bit further down than where that end section meets the tail of the wire and then I'm going to push that back on itself as sharply as I can manage. So we're making a big loop in one direction followed by a smaller loop in the other. Now you'll see that that wire has opened up which is fine, don't worry about it, we're going to sort that out in a little while. What we need to do is to close up the small loop which is made on this racetrack hairpin bend we've created. So I'm going to put the, the ends of my pliers either side of that and I'm going to support both the loop and the strand that comes away that we're still working with and I'm going to push that together so that it almost closes up. Let me just get that in the best possible light so you can see the journey it's taking. There you go, that's probably the best way to look at it. We're going to pop back in now with the round nose pliers and create a second circular form as close in size to the first as we can possibly muster. Don't worry if it doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is pop those pliers again around halfway down on the tail of the wire and you can see, hopefully it's not too blurry coming up in that direction, it's on the tail of wire going this way and it's further away than you think it ought to be but once you start rotating the design around, let me just twitch that slightly to the side. I'm going to push that around the pliers. I know it's slightly blurry, that's because my focal length is set to down here. So I'm going to drop the wire down so you can see what we're getting to so far. So at the moment, the loop that is as yet completed is slightly larger than the first loop. So we want to shrink that down. And the way to do that is to put the pliers into position and continue rotating around and then draw the tail back towards the preceding section of loop that we made. So again, we're going to switch back to our flat facing pliers, like so. Push the wire back so that it racetrack hairpins back towards the side of the loop. And then again, we're going to support the preceding loop and the racetrack hairpin and squish that up together until that's almost closed up. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now, at this stage, you may, you may have one side that's slightly larger than the other. I'm actually not going to stress about that because there's a way to fix that later. What we're going to do now is to create a third looping shape coming around here and back towards the preceding racetrack hairpin type of shape. Let's put those pliers in again. You could use a mark or you could use your multi-step bail makers and I'm going to rotate those around until the first loop is looking to be around the same size as the one we're working on and then you can just take the tail across if it's easier until it comes back and sits centrally. So we've got like three flower design, three leaves perhaps. If that's slightly too large can just bring that in ever so slightly. Now we're going to make quite a sharp angle now coming up and away so that that central loop shape is right in the middle. So if I pop my bent chain nose pliers just in the wire just after that third loop shape and push that wire up firmly, what you should end up with is a little bit like a peacock tail, a stylized peacock tail. And you can just maneuver this slightly to get it to sit centrally above that middle loop. So I'm just going to check on to see if there are any questions at this stage because I'd much rather answer them or show you if I need to. Uh, Margaret is loving this. That is very, very beautiful of you. Thank you so much. Irene says so lovely. Beautiful bead says Margaret. You're such a great family and I'm so pleased to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for letting me into your houses, so to speak. 
So what I want to do is to ensure that my upright wire is indeed upright. If I pop that back down on the board, there's a spare one that I made earlier. So from that approximately three and three quarter inches of wire, we've got a nice long tail up at the top. That will give you enough to decide if you want a wrapped loop at the top of your charm. The same technique will be applied no matter which bead order you choose to use. So I'm just going to do one of these for you because the other two will make up in exactly the same way. All you'll be doing is varying which beads you use. So here's the piece we've just made together now with that nice straight central section. I think I'm going to put a large doily, allow that to slide all the way down to the base. If you find that that's not sitting centralised, you can just bring up that first loop ever so slightly and that may help your doily to sit flatter. So that's actually sitting much more happy now. It was slightly on the slant. So you can always move these swooshy loops down at the bottom if you need to, to get your bead order to work for you. Previously, when I first started making wire jewellery, I simply would have taken this bead away and found a round bead to sit so it couldn't move but there are usually ways that you can edit the design to fit the brief you want to work with. So let's just add some other random beads now. Let's put this big, it's almost like a very, very sultry, smoky quartz that's been matte buffed. It is indeed a crystal bead. So I'm going to add in now one of the smaller daisy spacers. I will, I promise you I will. It's going on the wire whether it wants to or not. And then we might put the gorgeous two-tone matte buff and high polish facet it's almost like a golf ball bead pop that down onto the wire like so and i think then we'll see what one of these coils looks like you don't have to use them it's just a way of adding a little bit of extra drama if you wanted a very very long drop you want to extend your beads strand in some way it's almost like just a little very very simple way to add and fill space so i'm just going to make sure that that's completely square before i go anywhere and to make sure that those ends are nice and tight. So what I would do is just bring the end in ever so slightly. You don't need to do big movements to make this safe and secure. Just making sure that they're not sticking out is the key. So very, very tiny. Just bring that in slightly. Before we add that on, let's have a look at what that looks like. I think I actually prefer it without the coil to be quite honest. So you don't have to use that coil design if you don't want to. It can be useful if you're just looking for something to balance your beads out. So I'm going to take that off for now. Put another of the smaller daisy spaces on instead. Now I've shown you wrapped loops a thousand times. Maybe that's a little bit dramatic. It might not be a thousand times. What I'm going to do now is to show you how to create an effective open and closable loop that will last a long time, such as I have on this design. So for the little triple swoosh floral design that matches in with the baby dragon's tail, you don't have really a front and a back. It's multi-sided, so it doesn't really matter which way. I prefer to end with a metal spacer because it means when I make the forwards bend up and away, so our triple swoosh is flat to the table, I want the wire to come away at 90 degrees. But with this design, it doesn't matter which way it's going. I've put a metal bead up at the top because it protects the glass crystal. Now we're going to go back to those round nose pliers and just spin that wire around. So again, might be a bit blurry because I'm higher up than my focal length is set to. What I'm going to do is take that tail all the way around. Now this is an open and closable loop, which means that the angle of wire comes away directly above the bead. You don't leave a little gap to allow wrapping. What you do need to do is look very carefully where the tail of wire crosses over that angle we created at the top of that bead stack and that's where we're going to cut. So using the flush side to leave a neat end, I've just knocked things on the floor, what a surprise. What we're going to do now is close up that loop, make sure that the very end of the wire meets the angle that we created, you can just tighten that up slightly and then we're going to really really put pressure on that open and closable loop. Now if you struggle with uh, the compression like I'm compressing now you can allow your pliers to help you by putting one handle on the desk 
put the loop into position and then you may be able to get the right kind of compression just by pressing down on top. If you struggle with manual dexterity it's a way to just help you along a little bit or if you get tired very very easily you may find that helpful. So I've really really squished this open and closable loop up at the top. What I'm going to do is to support the bead stack whilst I open up the open side and I'm opening that like a jump ring so that comes up and away rather than pulling apart like so. And we're going to take that loop and add it into the centre of the baby dragon's tail section we created earlier on. As I mentioned when we were making this, if it's your preference, I showed you when to add in wrapped loops so you could create all of your charms first, pop them on as you're creating the baby dragon's tail. So what I'm going to do now is close up that loop tricky to see on camera because there's so much going on but it's basically we open one way and then we close back to the, where we started and what I tend to do just for insurance is give that a really good and hearty squish to make sure it's straight so that from the front that's imperceptible I don't want you to see the back of that loop I want you to be concentrating on the smooth look of the design so it hangs down like so when it's on the skin it will hang straight and then you can add designs to either side let me just show you both of these side by side so if this is too clustered for you just have the one in the center or don't have any at all it's absolutely up to you my preference is to teach people techniques and give you an idea for a design I absolutely adore seeing your designs when you have made along with me but I particularly love it when you've taken the techniques and you've run with them so I hope that you've enjoyed our Gollum make along today I will just check those links after I finish let's just pop my silly face back up here hello it's me I'm Jen coming to you from the UK somewhere between Oxford and Birmingham. I don't know why I said Northampton earlier, absolutely gone for the day I reckon. I don't know if you've noticed this but a um, little bit Beads and Blooms inspired perhaps. If you've not booked on for Beads and Blooms there's still time, there's a couple of spaces left check it out see what you think also as I mentioned earlier on I popped some links in for those golem strands if you fancy snagging some for yourself go and check it out the quality is exceptional I think I actually quite like that one with just the central dangly but you can see that we've got two different techniques of making the same overall shape one which is layers and layers of swooshing wire and one which is a single flat layer I hope you've enjoyed it I'm going to hang around in uh, the comments for a few minutes now to see if there are any further questions and I look forward to seeing you again very very soon take care bye for now